Hi, today I am talking about what I typically eat to stay lean and healthy. The operative word being healthy. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Sophie. Welcome to my channel, the Gorgeously Green channel, where I give lifestyle tips every single week on helping you to stay healthier and happier. I'm a board certified nutritionist, I'm the author of four books, and I love what I do. So today I am going to be doing a little bit of a deep dive by way of six tips on what I typically eat in a day to stay lean and healthy. But the focus is really on healthy because my philosophy is that if you go for the healthy, then you very often get the lean for free. So the focus is always on health and my focus is always on long-term health and longevity. So before we jump into these six tips and, and try and stay watching all the way through to the end because they are all equally important. I want you to really get all of them. Before we go there, I just want to quickly give you a little bit of background of how I sort of came to this way of eating. So when I turned about, I'm going to say about 47, my body started to change and it started from not, not just from the outside so much, although it did start changing a bit, um, but from the inside. So, you know, I went to my physical and, you know, they have a method, I'm not quite sure what the, what the machine is that they use to test, you know, your fat to, to muscle ratio. And basically my doctor explained to me, to my horror, how, you know, the mitochondria um, changes in your muscles as you get older. And basically this sort of pernicious fat creeps into your muscles and he just said it as it was, and he said, it's rather like if you go to the store and you look at a piece of very marbled beef compared to a piece of very lean beef, like a filet mignon. And I was like, okay, I get that. So that was kind of the first time that I was like, oh wow, things really do change. And of course, I know that we you know, lose lean muscle mass. So all these things together, and then there were the internal things, the biomarkers, you know, in my blood, which for many of us, you know, do change as we get older. Our body doesn't work as efficiently. And, and one example of that is our digestion. So our digestion slows down, right? Our digestive fire isn't what it was when we were in our 20s, 30s, or even early 40s. And that's very often why when we get older, we need to take digestive enzymes in order to, you know, properly digest our food. And I started noticing these things. For instance, um, I noticed I wasn't digesting fat as well. It just didn't feel right. My digestion didn't feel right. So around about the same time, I started studying nutrition and health science. And to cut a very long story short, all of this study, this deep dive into the science, led me to the realization based on, on the evidence-based science that I'd been studying, that absolutely unequivocally, the healthiest way of eating that I could adopt would be a whole food plant-based diet. And when I say healthiest, this is for disease prevention, you know, of the number one killers, heart disease, many uh, cancers, um, etc. And that was it. That was as simple as that. And then I, I started to study those really healthy regions in the world, the blue zones, you know, that boast this very high number or used to of centenarians and learned that they ate a predominantly, I think, 95 or to 98 percent a whole food plant based diet. So I was like, OK, I'm going to go give it a go. So I did. And things changed really quickly for me. And the next time I went for a physical, my doctor was like, wow, what have, what have you been doing? Everything was better. It wasn't that I was super unhealthy because I've been pretty healthy for, for, for years now. It's kind of what I do. Um, it's, it's, it's been what I've been doing for many years, but, but um, things dramatically improved. My cholesterol levels became absolutely pristine. He said those cholesterol levels are, you know, beyond what they need to be and so on. My digestion felt better, my skin looked better, and I, I just started getting leaner. Now, I'm 
pretty, I'm a petite uh, woman, uh, just the way that I am. But, you know, I'm not talking about leanness and as in we all have to be teeny and tiny and thin. We're all be different, beautiful body shapes. My daughter, who's 18, is a completely different body shape to me. She's taller, she's curvier, she's gorgeous. Um, so when I talk about lean, I mean that we're all our best lean selves. You know, we've reached our ideal sort of body weight that feels right for you, that feels right for me, and that is ultimately really healthy. So you now may be thinking, well, okay, she's going to talk about whole food plant uh, based way of eating. I, I, I sort of hesitate to call it a diet because I'm so against this kind of diet mentality because it's it immediately becomes restrictive and calorie counting and I can't have this and I can't have that and I'm so against that because you know food should be enjoyed and celebrated and I think if we start stressing out about what we eat the stress in of itself can cause digestive issues so I love to enjoy my food but because I realized that for other people it was harder because now I've been doing this for like about six years and so I live it, eat it, breathe it, blog it, write about it, film it, photograph it. I am just in it. My family members are whole food plant based, the whole thing. So it's really easy for me. And, and I've realized because of comments and some of my readers are like, but how do I make that transition? And it's really hard. And how am I going to get enough protein? And it's going to be boring and awful. And I hate cooking and the whole thing. So to that end, I run these plant powered challenges. I call it my 31 day plant powered challenge. So for 31 days, I take you by the hand and lead you through the transition. Oh, just why not give it a try for 31 days? And I, I did it for 31 days because I knew that in that 31 days that many um, participants would experience really significant changes. And they did, and they do. So the next one might be coming up soon, depending on when you're watching this video. Link for it underneath the video. Let's get into those tips. So tip number one is drink your smoothie. So a smoothie has been an absolute game changer for me because in that one smoothie a day, I can get about 50, over 50% 50 of the nutrients that I need for my body and so can you during the day. And that includes, you know, your proteins, your healthy fats, your antioxidants, your vitamins, your minerals, etc. And that's why I love a smoothie. Now, that's for the health uh, benefits of it. So keeping healthy, you can put so much in that smoothie. You know, I customize my experiment with my smoothies until the cows come home. You know, I'll put in amla powder for extra vitamin C. Everything's, you know, whole food plant-based. I put whole foods in there where possible to get my vitamins. You know, I'll put in lots of different fruits. Um, I'll put in a plant-based protein in order to dial the protein up. I'll put in seeds, maybe even nuts to get the protein up, higher greens, etc. Um, and the thing that I love about the health benefits um, of a smoothie are that you can really customize according to your health um, issues. So for instance, if you're somebody who can't have tons of dark leafy greens, you don't need to do a green smoothie. And that might be somebody who's on blood thinners or you know, you've got some issue with blood clotting and then you don't want to have all those greens. So you'll go for a different kind of smoothie. Um, and then somebody who doesn't have that issue and you want, you need a lot more iron, you'll throw in all the spinach and the dark leafy greens and such. Maybe if you're diabetic or you need to watch your sugar, you can go for low sugar fruits such as berries and apples and pears. Um, so, you know, the sky's the limit, the customization is the limit, the, you know, whatever you want. And the one thing I'll say is that some of the foods that I recommend, you know, as a nutritionist to everybody, such as ground flaxseed, because it's so preventative against disease. I did a whole video on it, um, and I'll link to that underneath this video. But you can just pop that in your smoothie. It's so easy. Tablespoon, in it goes, of brown flaxseed. And you're done for the day instead of sort of having to agonize how you're going to get these different really healthy nutrients in. I'll put a recipe underneath this video of a smoothie that I, a very sort of generic smoothie that I like now, but remember, customize it to how you like it to be. And um, 
the lean um, side of it, because for each tip I'm doing healthy and lean, the lean side of it is, you know, you a, a, a smoothie is not going to make you gain weight. Um, if you don't want it to, and depending on what you put in it. So again, if you want to keep the sugar content low, maybe you won't do a whole banana. I remember I was teaching one of my wellness trees, and I actually have a whole frozen banana in my smoothie. And one of the women who came, she was horrified. She was like, oh, you have a whole banana? She was like, I have like a quarter of a banana and I feel guilty. But you know, you'll know, you'll know how much sugar, you know, you can, uh, in terms of fruit, sugar and fruit, um, that you can, that you can um, have, you know, some people put dates in and some people, you know, absolutely don't. And you can have your smoothie as a meal replacement. So sometimes for breakfast, I actually don't feel like eating breakfast. If I get up early and I know I'm going to work out, I'll have a giant smoothie packed with protein. That's all I'll have. And that does me good until an early lunch. You know, it could be that instead of, um, you know, if you're an afternoon snacking person, you get that slump in the afternoon where you would typically reach for a great big latte or something sweet, then that's maybe when you could have your smoothie. And that will really help you with, with staying lean and staying healthy. Okay, so that was tip number one. Tip number two is get enough protein. And this is particularly important as we get older because we need that lean muscle mass. But here's the thing, as I said at the beginning of the video, we want the lean muscle ma mass, but we don't want the marbled fat, as in the marbled steak <laughs> in the display case. We want this beautiful lean muscle. And so uh, what I have found through my own experience and taking you know, hundreds of women through doing what I do is this can be achieved by a very, I call it sort of clean plant-based protein. But you do need to make sure that you're getting enough and particularly as we get on a bit in age. So I'd say after the age of 50, you need to start paying attention. Am I really getting enough protein in every meal? And there's so many different and easy ways to do this. I'm not, I'll do at some time a whole video on all the different snacks and things. I do have a video, uh, I'll link to that as well under here, about um, high, vegan high protein meal prep because I wanted to show you kind of how easy it is to prep it and it's also really inexpensive. Um, it is easy, but if you're new to it, it, it requires a little bit more thought. Um, so what I'm gonna do is underneath the video, I'm going to show you how to calculate. It's a really easy calculation. You can just have your uh, phone ready with your little calculator app open and how you can calculate how much protein you need very approximately. Um, you just pop in your weight and you, you do a little multiplication. It's very easy. But keep in mind that that's a very rough approximation. And if you are a little bit older, and particularly if you exercise a little bit more, so if you're doing your resistance training and you're really exercising, which I highly recommend you do, um, make sure that you're upping your protein. You might need another sort of, to add another 20 grams or so to that a day. And so protein sources for me will be organic um, soy products. And just a little myth buster here, because again, I don't want to get into the weeds of this right now. When I mention soy, a lot of people are like, soy is horrible, soy is so bad for you, but it's actually not. That's a myth. And I am going to put a link underneath this video on who shouldn't eat soy. And you're going to find that really interesting. So please, if you're one of those people that's heard it on the blogosphere or the internet that soy you've got to avoid at all costs i beg you to look click that link and and, and look at that because it's really important because actually soy if it's organic and non-gmo can be protective against breast cancer it can diminish symptoms of menopause such as hot flashes it can be so beneficial and of course it's very high in protein you know your edamame which is the least processed form of soy and then you've got your soy milk and your tofu and tempeh which I love and is delicious and and so on 
Um, very few people, a very small percentage of people are allergic to soy, which of course then you can't eat it. But you know, the legumes, the beans and the legumes, the lentils, the peas are such, they have so much protein. I think one cup of lentils has, I think it's 18 grams, close to 20 grams of protein and so easy to just toss into, you know, a Buddha bowl. So I love to have these bowls either butter bowls or grain bowls and then I can pop you know these little cubes of tempeh or roasted chickpeas or and all these delicious things and, and that's what I love to eat but I do make sure that for breakfast for lunch and for dinner that I get adequate really clean plant-based protein and the one last thing so that's the sort of um, the lean is that that will keep you lean and it will, will really add to your beautiful lean muscle mass. And the healthy of that protein is that if you're eating plant-based pro protein as opposed to animal protein, plant-based protein is anti-inflammatory. And as we get older, we tend to get aches and pains and osteoarthritis and arthritis and all different kinds of inflammation. And so for me, when I embarked on this new way of eating, it was very important to me to make sure that I was diminishing the inf any kind of inflammation. And that's exactly what happens. There are blood biomarkers that you can actually check to see how much inflammation you have in your blood. And mine went really down after being on a plant-based diet. Whereas eating animal protein will increase your um, inflammation. So that's very important. Okay, tip number three. Eat plenty of complex carbs. Now before you switch off this video and go, oh my gosh, she's getting us to eat carbs and I look at a carb and I gain weight, please hear me out. So carbs are not the devil incarnate. And um, the big thing to realize is that there are good carbs and there are quote unquote bad carbs or there are healthy carbs and unhealthy. And to keep this so simple for you, healthy carbs, complex carbs are full of fiber. And this is really, really important for me. So the difference between let's just say a whole grain bread or a whole grain pasta and a white bread or a white pasta is that the white um, bread or pasta or whatever has been stripped of um, its fiber and all of its nutrients, its minerals and its vitamins. Whereas the whole grain version is a complex carb because it has that fiber in it and all the other good stuff. And when a fruit or a grain or any plant food has fiber in it, which all plant foods do, because it's what keeps them standing upright, um, it is that fiber is so important. That's what makes it a complex carb, meaning that your body has to kind of work hard to break it down. It has to expend energy to do that. And it mitigates a blood sugar hike. So uh, another example would be fruit juice, orange juice, all the fiber gone from it, it will spike your blood sugar. So I don't recommend fruit juices. I don't drink fruit juices. Whereas an orange that has all the fiber in it will not spike your blood sugar um, in the same way. So complex carbs for me, I eat them for lunch and for dinner, but mainly for lunch because they give me energy. And I work out quite a lot, I'm really active, and I really do, I dislike, I, I cannot be hungry. If I'm hungry, then I will reach for something that is unhealthy. Because my husband says that I'm like a hummingbird, I whir around everywhere at the rate of knots, and I burn through quite quickly. So I need to have a lot of energy, and I don't want to have an afternoon slump, you know, where I'm not near my blender, so I can't make a smoothie, and I'm gonna reach for the nearest unhealthy snack. But what completely takes that away is if I have these beautiful carbs, like, um, I mean, yes, complex carbs, like for lunch, I'll have a bowl and in the bowl I'll have sweet potato or root vegetables or healthy grains, gluten-free grains like, you know, wild rice or a quinoa, um, you know, so 
Complex carbs cover a huge gamut because it's also your beans, it's your root veggies, it's your squashes, it's your fruits. And I just, as a nutritionist, I just feel so passionate. It's given so much nourishment to me to eat these grains. And the lean aspect of this is that it hasn't made me gain any weight whatsoever. In fact, the opposite. It keeps me lean and energized. And the healthy aspects, aside from all those minerals and I eat the colors of the rainbow and everything like that you're getting, is gut health. So when we eat these complex carbs with all this fiber, we need, we really need this for good gut health. And one of the things that's very important as we get older is detoxifying our body through good gut health. And when we have all this wonderful fiber, it acts like a broom in your system that it really takes out, it pulls out on a daily basis what doesn't need to be there. And this is really important. This is, this is um, stuff like excess estrogen, you know, floating through your body. And these things that we really need to sort of, they're not things, these um, compounds and substances that need to, don't need to be in, they need to be out. And we need fiber for that. So think twice before giving up your beautiful complex carbs and grains and, and whatnot. You know, you can still be gluten free, but you can keep those in and that's what I do. Okay, tip number four, eat your healthy fats. So it's re we really need our fats. We need our fats for brain health, for beautiful hair, for our eyes, for our, all our bodily functions. And you know, the, the fats that we can't get from our diet um, are, I'm sorry, that we can't make in our body are the uh, essential fatty acids. So it's really important that we get those and we get those or I get those through seeds primarily, lots of delicious seeds. So I eat a lot of flax seed and I eat chia seeds and I eat hemp seeds. And before you think, wait a minute, she's a rabbit or a bird. No, it is actually really easy to get those seeds into your diet. You blend them in a smoothie. I sprinkle them on uh, bowls. I sprinkle them on a salad. Even if I'm making, you know, a plant-based sandwich, you can put it in the sandwich filling. Seeds are amazing because they add crunch to everything, and particularly if they're roast sprouted and roasted. So really, really delicious. Now, healthy fats um, are unsaturated fats. You know, now it's been uh, sort of despite all, again, the kind of what's on the blogosphere of like, you know, butter is healthy now, whatever. You know, the Presidential Advisory Committee of the American Heart Association now advises against saturated fat, that it will indeed increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. And cardiovascular disease is the number one killer, particularly for women as we get older. So, the only saturated fat that I eat in, in moderation, just a tiny bit every now and again, is a coconut oil. Um, so again, coconut oil has been touted as a health food and it's not because it is saturated fat, but a little tiny bit, you know. And I think fat and oil is also very dependent on, on how you are, what your health status is. So for instance, if you're diabetic or if you need or want to lose a lot of weight, then maybe you want to go oil free as much as you possibly can. And then others who don't need to, you know, you can get away with having a lot more olive oil or, you know, whatever uh, the healthier plant oils are that you can eat. So healthy fats, just to recap, that I eat in my diet almost every single day um, is avocados, love, um, uh, nuts, delicious. I always eat them. I buy them raw and I roast them to make them crunchy and delicious. Uh, seeds, a little bit of plant oil, a really good quality olive oil, and um, I, I never cook with olive oil. Don't want to make this video too long about oils, but be very careful with cooking with oils, and particularly with a cold pressed extra virgin olive oil, because you're destroying all the nutrients in it. And when you heat an oil, it um, it uh, releases free radicals, and free radicals are not good for aging. 
trust me they're not good for keeping our skin beautiful so much better and um, what I do with, um, with almost every cooked meal that I cook so and I cook a lot so for whether I'm cooking a curry or a marinara sauce or a soup or a casserole or whatever it's always the basis the saute the onions and the garlic and whatever and I water saute it which means that instead of sauteing in oil I use a veggie broth to saute that's what I do <laughs> so tip number five is get rid of the sugar so really truly this is something that I've actually done for years before I even went whole food plant-based um, because sugar just isn't healthy and we get way way too much of it in our diet and I know for so many people it's a very difficult one to crack because you get the sugar cravings and often the sugar cravings by the way happen because you're not fully nourished and if you're really nourished with all these other beautiful foods this is what I found to be my experience when I was eating enough of the complex carbs and the healthy fats I didn't crave the sugar as much plus I've done a whole video on how to deal with sugar cravings linking to that underneath the video but it's very very important for to keep lean and healthy to get rid of all sort of added sugars and refined sugars and that does include things like agave syrup you know honey um, a lot of the sweeteners that you think maybe you know are healthy the coconut sugar the, all of that you know they, they they market them as being healthier and maybe they're a little bit lower on the glycemic index but it's still sugar and it's still going to spike your blood sugar so be really really careful with that you know what I use to sweeten my um, baking or whatever I want to put a little bit of sweetener in is, is generally dates really like dates because it's a whole food and it contains fiber and remember if something contains fiber it blunts the blood sugar spike so dates are great you can also get a date sugar uh, you can get a date which is basically where it's been sort of crystallized you can get a date uh, syrup as well if that's easier for baking I make my own kind of date syrup just by boiling dates down in a in a, with a little bit of water and then pureeing them um, you could also uh, another little tip that I sometimes use is something called yakon syrup I'll put a link to it underneath um, and it's not sweet sweet but it's actually really great for diabetics and it's really really good for gut health and it is a sweetener it looks a little bit like date syrup and it tastes a little bit like that so it's just something you might want to look into and in terms of things like stevia and monk fruit I would say in moderation but be a little bit careful if you're trying to kick sugar because what we're trying to do is train our taste buds to accept something that is less sweet so for instance when I really gave up sugar and all of those sweeteners um, suddenly fruit like a blueberry or an apple tasted super super sweet and that's really how it should be that's natural so be a little bit careful of using those kind of sweeteners and in terms of artificial sweeteners the chemical artificial sweeteners you know like your splendors and your aspartame and whatever i really recommend that you avoid them i never have them in my diet they've been linked to obesity poor gut health and a plethora of other health issues so to recap for this tip i mean it's kind of really obvious to stay lean stay away from the sugar but also truly to stay healthy stay away from that added sugar and that refined sugar and tip number six is drinks drink smart that's my tip so what do i drink in the day I don't drink coffee anymore because of gut health so it really didn't didn't work for my gut health and my digestive system too acidic and if you do have gut health issues it can really play havoc with your gut so don't do that anymore um, I drink tea so I drink one cup of black tea in the morning I'm a Brit I like my English breakfast tea I love it 
And then for the rest of the day, I drink a lot of green tea uh, because of the health benefits, full of antioxidants. It's always organic green tea. It's always loose. If you hate green tea, it's probably because you haven't drunk really good quality loose leaf green tea. I also really enjoy matcha tea. Uh, matcha tea is the whole uh, green leaf ground up and it's one of the very few foods uh, that has ever been proven to boost metabolism. Um, so that's, that's the lean part of this tip. Um, so green tea, I drink lots of other different teas as well. I love hibiscus tea and hibiscus tea is a really good tip if you're trying to come off sugar because it's slightly sweet, it's very satisfying, it's beautiful to have it iced. Um, and then I'll drink, I, there's lots of other different teas that I, that I drink, but I'm, I'm a big person, I'm a big tea fan, either iced or hot tea. I stay away from any kind of coffee shop, sugary latte drink, um, soda, any kind of soda that has sugar in it, and diet sodas, because all of them are going to affect your health adversely, every single one of them. So in order to get that nice little kick, from a sort of sparkly drink. I drink a lot of um, lovely sparkling uh, mineral water. I also enjoy kombucha every once in a while. And you know, finally on the drink um, uh, subject, I, I just don't drink alcohol. So, you know, for quite a few years now, it's just not something that I um, enjoy. It's just not something that works for me from, you know, uh, health, healthy and lean uh, point of view. But from a healthy point of view, you know, just it's it's now known that even two glasses of wine a day can increase your risk of breast cancer. So again, everything that I do sort of leads towards that long-term health. And now I'm going to give you just one little bonus uh, tip, as it were, because it's just something that I do for health and, uh, and it's sort of really, I need to say this as part of, to round this video off, is uh, supplements. So I'm not going to do a whole video about all the different supplements here, that's a whole nother video, but within a whole food plant base diet, I will always have a, a B12 vitamin. That's really, really important. I'll put a link to one that I like underneath this video. So if you're going to go, if you're deciding, or if you are whole food plant-based, that's the only supplement that you must take. And the reason why is because the bacteria actually uh, which is where it comes from, the B12, used to be very plentiful on plants and isn't anymore because our plants are so sanitized. The animal eats the plant to get the B12 and then we eat the animal flesh, or I used to, in order to get the B12, but if you're not eating the animal flesh, you're probably not gonna get it from the sanitized plants. Hope that makes sense, take a supplement. And finally, vitamin D is so important for lean uh, muscle mass, for bone health, for immunity, for um, uh, magnesium absorption, for so many different things. So just make sure you're getting enough vitamin D. This video has turned out to be so long. So I apologize, but I wanted to get a lot of information in there, make it useful, make it helpful for you. Let me know any comments. Let me know if there's other videos that you want me to make. You might have picked up on one point that I made in one of the tips and go, oh, I want to hear more about that. Or can you do another video on that? I totally will. I love your comments. And by the way, I love you as a community because you're such a kind, loving, supportive community, not only of me, but of everybody else in this community. So I appreciate you guys so much and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video and don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos, please subscribe and make sure you click on the bell icon next door to the subscription box so you'll be notified as soon as a video goes live. Also, make sure you turn on the notifications for YouTube on your phone.